Once a common sight in the southeast of the United States, the ivory-billed woodpecker hasn't been officially seen in 80 years. For decades, one question has captivated millions. Is it really extinct, or could it still be out there? Numerous sightings have challenged the idea that it's extinct. Let's finally answer the question in this video. To find out why the ivory-billed woodpecker's fate remains such a mystery, we need to go back to the late 1800s, a time when its population began to dwindle rapidly. It was already considered extremely rare by the turn of the 20th century, with some believing it to be extinct as early as 1920, until an ivory-billed woodpecker was shot along the Tensas River in 1932 and brought to bird enthusiasts, prompting a team to be established to track them down, capture them on camera, and hear their call. After many months of extensive searching, the team finally found what they were looking for. In a remote patch of old-growth forest known as the Singer Track, they discovered a small, surviving population of ivory-billed woodpeckers. Unfortunately, this piece of land was scheduled to be destroyed for logging. In a race against time, the conservation group desperately attempted to buy the land to save the species, but the company refused to sell, condemning the ivory-billed woodpecker to extinction. During their time in the Singer Track, the team managed to capture the only known audio and video of the ivory-billed woodpecker. However, their research was cut short in 1944, when the last known sighting was made, just before the last logging trucks rolled in, reducing the old-growth forest to a wasteland. Since that fateful day in 1944, it has widely been regarded as extinct. No confirmed sightings have been made since, but with so many adamant that it still lives on, it has not yet been categorized as extinct. With that final glimpse, the ivory-billed woodpecker became no more than a memory. But what exactly led to its decline? Was it habitat loss, hunting, or maybe even disease? In the years following the American Civil War, logging operations swept through the South, decimating vast tracts of old growth forest. The relentless deforestation was, according to most experts, the primary driver behind the bird's eventual extinction. At least that is what most experts believe. Many others have suggested that hunting was the primary driver of its decline, as vast areas of suitable habitat still remain. But what exactly did this elusive bird look like? Understanding its unique physical features is crucial in distinguishing it from other species and dismissing false sightings. The ivory-billed woodpecker was among the largest woodpeckers in history, with an impressive wingspan of 76 centimeters. It was second in size only to the imperial woodpecker, which boasted an even larger wingspan of 89 centimeters. One of the most crucial identification features was extensive white on the trailing edge of the underwing and on the front edge of the wing. Given that these woodpeckers were often observed in flight, this distinct pattern set them apart from other similar species. However, in some rare cases, the pileated woodpecker has been found to have white across the trailing edges of its wing. And the fact that the pileated woodpecker ranges across the entire eastern United States explains many ivory-billed woodpecker sightings. The name ivory-billed comes from their strong pale beak, which was geniusly adapted for drilling into wood for beetle larva, which was its main food source. This preference for large beetle larva limited it to rich areas of old-growth forest. So where exactly did it live? Estimating the original distribution of the ivory-billed woodpecker is challenging to say the least, as comprehensive surveys were only undertook after it was already extremely rare. To find out its original range, we mainly have a map produced in 1942 by James Tanner to go off of. Luckily, this map is very detailed, showing that the ivory bill ranged from eastern Texas in the west, up to southern Illinois in the north, and to North Carolina in the west, and Florida in the south. It inhabited low-lying areas from the coast to no more than 30 meters above sea level. Although Tanner's map is considered accurate, numerous records from outside this range question its authenticity. For example, records were somewhat frequent in south central Texas and Kentucky until the turn of the 20th century. Ivory bill remains have also been found in Ohio and West Virginia. The ivory bill might have once ranged further along the eastern coast, beyond southern North Carolina. Even Thomas Jefferson, yes, the former president, recorded them as a species found in Virginia. Audubon reported sightings as far north as Maryland, with the northernmost records coming from New Jersey in the 1700s. Originally found across the island of Cuba, by the year 1900, it was already restricted to the island's montane pine forests, seeking refuge from human encroachment. The ivory-billed woodpecker was not spread evenly across its range. Instead, it was highly concentrated in certain areas with suitable habitat and lots of food. Dense swamps, old-growth forests, and pine forests were among its preferred habitats. The population density was astonishingly low, only one pair per 44 kilometers, making them an elusive species even within their suitable habitats. Their low population density was driven by their need for lots of beetle larvae, 
which require tons of rotting wood. But they also ate acorns, nuts, seeds, and fruits. The bird would hammer its beak into dead trees and peel off the bark to reveal the hidden lava within. It had no competition for these grubs, as it was the only animal in its habitat able to feed in this way. Every day they followed the same routine, leaving their roost at dawn to feed in the early morning, resting during the day, and feeding again in the evening before dusk. Two subspecies of the ivory-billed woodpecker are recognized, the Cuban ivory bill and the American ivory bill. It has long been considered that they might actually be completely different species. So a study was done in 2006, comparing their DNA with each other and the closely related imperial woodpecker from Western Mexico. The study found that the three lineages split over a million years ago. However, this evidence may not be completely accurate. They weren't necessarily isolated for this whole time as a study also hinted at prominent gene flow around 200,000 years ago. As the sea levels dropped, the Yucatan Peninsula would have extended close enough to Cuba that woodpeckers would be able to disperse between Cuba and the mainland, and maybe why the Imperial Woodpecker and the Cuban Ivory Bill share more DNA in common. Despite this study, the Cuban ivory bill is still considered a subspecies. Regular reports have been made of ivory billed woodpeckers across the southeastern United States. In most cases, these sightings can be dismissed as misidentified pileated woodpeckers, or calls that sound like them, but are actually very similar noises, occasionally made by blue jays. But there are sightings that are supported by tangible evidence. Possibly the most credible reports came in 1967 from ornithologist John Dennis, who had rediscovered the birds in Cuba. He claims to have seen an ivory-billed woodpecker in eastern Texas, with many more sightings made in the same area in subsequent years. He also captured audio, but this can't be confirmed as it also matches the song of the blue jay. A pair of alleged ivory bills were sighted 11 times in central Florida in the 1960s, which were returning to the same roost. This roost was damaged in a storm, allowing a feather to be collected from it. But this feather is not conclusive proof, as it may have been left in the roosting hole for many years. Other seemingly plausible sightings were made in Louisiana, but the most famous sighting was made in 2004 in the Cache River Wildlife Refuge in Arkansas. A video was filmed which many claim to be an ivory bill, but due to the fact that it was so pixelated and partially behind a tree, it could have easily been a different species, although it appears to match the ivory billed woodpecker the closest. The video was blurry, the evidence inconclusive, but could it really be the last known footage of a living ivory billed woodpecker? And if so, can it still be found out there? The sighting was accepted as proof by many, and other sightings were made in the same area. But some believe the morphology to be consistent with a pileated woodpecker, and thus, the identity of the bird in the video remains a mystery. Extensive searches across its former habitat have failed to turn up any evidence, and alleged photos have been too blurry to accurately determine, bringing many to the conclusion that it is definitely extinct. In the 1940s, the bird was believed to be extinct in Cuba, but was rediscovered when seven pairs were found in 1948 and continued to be seen until the 1959 Cuban Revolution, which caused ornithologists to flee the country. The last confirmed sighting was made in 1987, in the eastern mountains of the country, causing the area to be turned into a nature reserve, although they were never seen again. If the ivory-billed woodpecker does still persist, it is most likely to be found in the remote mountains of Cuba, as only 20% of suitable habitat where it once lived has been searched. So is the ivory-billed woodpecker really extinct? or is it clinging on in some remote forest? I don't think I'm ready to answer that question yet, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave a comment below. Do you want to know what happened to the giant sloths that roamed the Americas? Watch this video to find out. I'll see you next time.